And if in the market looking for a cloud creator or a generator, then the Grio Cloud from Cassie is the add-on that you've been looking for. This doesn't only come with a cloud creator, but also comes with 200 VDB clouds that you can work with. And how you get to work with this is super easy. So for those who like to get this, there's going to be a link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download it and start working with it. So to get started, all you need to do is fire up Blender and you can go over to edit, go over to preference, then go over to where you have add-ons and install the add-on. Now once you're done installing the add-on, the next thing which you need to do is go over to file path, go all the way down, click on the plus button and locate the real cloud folder. And in this case, once you find it, you can click on add and then you have the real clouds right here. So once you have that going, the next thing which you need to do is drag out the new panel and change the viewports to asset browser. Now within the asset browser, if you click on the drop down, you'll notice that we have the real cloud. Once you have that selected, you have access to three different categories. So we have the geometry node, which is one. And of course, if this doesn't load, you can click on this button to refresh it. And you also have the material. So these are the two major materials that are available. And if we click on this button, you see that we have the real cloud VDB assets. So all of these assets are currently available right here and you can choose to play with them. So we have one, two, three, and four. In terms of naming, this is improperly named, and I think this is something that the creator would do over time, but currently you can find out we have cloud trails right here, and we have other kinds of clouds. So if you like to work with any of these, you can simply click and drag and drop it in your viewport, and you can start using this really, really quick. Now, regardless of this, what if you like to create your own cloud? And this is where this add-on actually shines. So at this point, if we would like to create our own cloud, we can select any object we have within our viewport that we would like to convert to clouds. And if you tap N on the keyboard with the add-on installed, you would notice that we have a real cloud right here. So from here, you'd notice that this exists for both English and I believe this is Chinese. So you can switch between these. And if you like to convert the object within your viewport to cloud, you can simply click on convert to cloud. And once you do that, this automatically converts the object to cloud. So you now have this. If you like to set this up for rendering, you can simply do that by clicking on Cycles Auto Setup and automatically this sets it up for rendering and you can simply switch over to your viewport rendering and get the best result of what we're going for. So at this point, if you like to convert any other objects within your scene to become clouds, yes, you can. So you can make selections of as many things as possible and you can convert them to cloud. Now, coming back to the very first object that we were working on, if you would like to make some more modifications, say for example, seeding, you can play with the seed if this is what you want. You can also play with the size. So I can set this and drop it all the way down. You can play with the accuracy of the details that we have. If you have four different ones which you can pick from, you can also change the display. So this is also very good, especially if you want to optimize what you have within your scene at a certain time. So I would really love to see an update where this has a turn on and a turn off so we can actually have the object themselves and then maybe during rendering you can see the 100% display. That way this might have some more optimization because I can imagine if we load about 10 of these and uh, try to tweak them that might not be the easiest of things to do especially if you're converting directly from a complex mesh that you already have. But either ways this looks really really good. I mean for the most part it is pretty lightweight to load into your scene. Like this is very easy to load into your scene. For these ones, you can easily just drag and drop them in and get the clouds going. And uh, this looks nice. I'm very excited about the fact that you can literally convert anything. And despite that, you also have a remesh option. So you can turn on or turn off remeshing. You can already tell that this is using the geometry nodes to get some things going because if we go over to the modifier, you will also be able to have access to those. And if you like to remesh the resolution, you can get some very interesting remeshing going out there. And this looks really good. So if you're looking for lightweight clouds, or probably you're looking for an add-on that can create clouds really, really quick, then you can use this add-on and get the most out of it. And once you're done, you can go ahead and click on add modifier and copy. And this automatically just bakes it in there. And from here, you can start making some changes to both the color, the density, the subsurface scattering, ambient occlusion, and so on and so forth. And did I also mention that to any cloud that you drag in here, you can also make changes to the color. So because we already dragged in these other one, we can go ahead and make changes to the color as well. So if you're bringing in multiple clouds and you want to fine tune them, of course you can. So this is it. For those who like to take a look at this, then you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can check this out and grab it for yourself. 
A huge shout out to Cassie for making this possible. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.